open it up. It's a mini arcade, I mean, it has the joystick, the buttons, and as you can see, uh, it's not the best, con it's not in the best condition ever. I mean, the sticker is missing, parts of it are missing here, but it still plays, which is important, and it's still as fun as I remember it. But uh, Nintendo is first series of handhelds, and that's the Game Watch series, which I've been able to get three of. I have Mario Summon Factory. I have Mario Brothers Dual Screen, uh, where one player controls this side and another player controls this side. And the panorama screen version of Donkey Kong Circus. You flip this bad boy up and you know with a lot of effort, but you can see everything here. After the Game Watch series, Nintendo came out with the I think the most famous handheld of all time. And that's the Game Boy. Now uh, I didn't originally own a Game Boy. Uh, but I do remember playing it with some of my friends who did own it. And I thought it was really, really great to uh, play Nintendo games, NES games on the go. Games like Tetris, uh, Super Mario Land, uh, Donkey Kong Land, um, Link's Awakening. I mean, this thing really, really had a lot of cool games. The only problem with the original Game Boy is that this, the green and black screen. I mean, if you didn't play it right, or if you were in direct sunlight, you couldn't see what was going on here. But this is the one that started uh, Nintendo's uh, claim to fame on the handheld market. Uh, so when I had a chance to buy a boxed Game Boy, I jumped to the, uh, at it right away. Because I always wanted a, a Game Boy. Now after that, Nintendo released a Game Boy Pocket, which again, I never owned. And I haven't been able to find one boxed, but the console I did buy and I did own is the Game Boy Color. Now, I remember seeing uh, this thing announced on Club Nintendo and Nintendo Power, and I thought it was really cool that we're finally going to be able to make a good screen with color. What they, did, what they did here is that they released, well, they re released a lot of Game Boy games under the DX banner, which was the original Game Boy games with a certain color palette. And it was really cool, but they really flew off when they released the uh, Game Boy Color exclusive games, which were really little uh, transparent cartridges. I mean, those had NES quality to them, so, you know, this was my first handle, and I remember when I got this, I got Pokemon Red, which I mentioned in another video, and I played the handle, and I still turned it off from time to time. After that, uh, Nintendo released what a lot of people think is their one great failure, and that's the virtual one. Now, I can't speak for everyone else, but I myself liked the virtual boy. I mean, you could play, it had, it created this 3D effect that I thought was really cool at the time. The only problem is that since it uses uh, nothing but red color to create the 3D effect, if you play for it a lot, it does, it does give you a slight headache. Uh, and for this thing, I only own four games. Uh, Mario Tennis, Red Alarm, uh, Waterland, and Tetris with me. Uh, like I said, Nintendo was trying to innovate, and um, I agree that it, it would have worked better if it had more colors, but it's a, an interesting console, especially if you're a Nintendo collector. After the Game Boy Color, Nintendo came out with the Game Boy Advance. Now, up to this point, all the Game Boys, you could play them vertically. This one switched it, so you played it horizontally. And it felt right because uh, the Game Boy Advance has Super Nintendo quality to it. I mean, they made a lot of ports of Nintendo, Super Nintendo games to this thing. And all the games from the Game Boy Advance have that Super Nintendo feel, which I thought was really cool. Uh, the only problem with this uh, console is that, you know, the screen, if you don't play in a well-lit room, just like uh, the, the original Game Boy, you can't see it. I mean, 
try to play Castlevania Circle of the Moon on this, uh, and it's really hard because that in itself is a dark game, and with this thing, you know, forget about it. But Nintendo heard the fans, and they re released a Game Boy Advance SP, and this is the NES version. This was a return to form. They switched from the horizontal of the Game Boy Advance to vertically, like, you know, Game Boy Tradition. And the beauty of this thing is that it had a backlit screen. So, you know, even if you were in your room, know, you pitch dark, you just turn the, turn the screen on, and you can play in total darkness, which helped to, with a lot, a lot of games. I mean, seriously, some games are just too dark for their own good. But yeah, I was really happy to get this one because, like I said, it's the classic NES version, and I love the NES. So, after the success of the Game Boy line, Nintendo said, okay, we have that, let's go through a different route, let's experiment again. And they taunted a uh, new console that was not going to take the place of the Game Boy. It was just going to be like a second line, and that was... The Nintendo DS. Now, a lot of people, when Nintendo announced this thing, just like what happened with the Wii, uh, they weren't too sure about it. The reason for that is because of the touchscreen. I mean, you can uh, see games here, and you interacted with them on the screen below. Now, if you're a Nintendo fan, and you saw this, this reminded you of Game Watch. I mean, there's a Game Watch that had the two, two dual screen, and it's like, you know, Mario Bros. But this thing just flew off. I mean, developers started making really good games that took advantage of the touchscreen. And now you have interactive games like uh, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, uh, games like Trauma Center. Uh, the two Zelda games that came out for the DS just are amazing. You can trade link, not with this, but with the touchscreen. Uh, Medios, I mean, the list goes on and on. This thing was so successful. Then Nintendo retired the game, which I personally thought was really sad. And so now this is a de facto a portable console by choice. Since this thing was so successful, uh, the original DS, which I own, is a little big, but they made out a DS Lite, which is a smaller version of it. After that, they made the DSi, which is basically DS technology, but with two screens. I mean, two cameras, so you can, uh, you know, capture photos and do other stuff. But, in total, I wasn't sure of getting... A, I, I'm really happy with my DS, so I didn't want to get a DS Lite. I didn't see it. It's the same technology. Uh, the DSi caught my attention, but when I was all set to buy it, it was maybe right. The DSi XL. It's still DS technology, and much like the DSi, they took out the slot for Game Boy Advance games, which is a really, really bad decision, but, you know. Uh, it has the same two cameras, one in front, one on the back, but what uh, convinced me to, to hold on and buy the DSi and wait for this one is the massive screen. I mean, it's 93% bigger than the DS Lite and DSi. It makes the games just look way better. Uh, it comes with three pre-installed games. So far, the Nintendo uh, Advance SP NES version was my favorite of the handhelds. This took its place right after that. I mean, sure, it's not as handheld as or portable as the other consoles, but since you can't connect uh, the DS to uh, the TV screen, or, you know, touchscreen, being able to play DS games in these beautifully big, bright screens, it's just awesome. Just awesome. So, so far, this is my favorite uh, portable console. Yeah. Okay. So, these are the Nintendo portable consoles I own. I hope you guys liked the video and I'll try to make another one soon. This is Vargas XX78.